All right, so we're talking about conic sections again, and we have this thing called an ellipse. Yesterday we went over the formula for an ellipse, how to kind of determine whether something is a circle or an ellipse. So we're going to do one more example talking about this. Let's look back at this, this example. First thing, you need to be able to determine what type of figure it is just by looking at the equation. So uh, automatically we can rule out a parabola. We can rule out a parabola because that's a y squared. Y squareds are not associated with parabolas. So this thing is either a circle or an ellipse. I can say a circle or an ellipse because it's got a plus right here. We're going to find out in a, in a minute if that thing changes to a minus, we're going to have a different shape altogether. All right, so it's not a parabola because parabolas don't have y squared. It's either a circle or an ellipse because circles and ellipse both have an x squared and a y squared and a plus. Is this thing a circle or an ellipse? What do you think? Why is it not a circle? Because the circles have x squared and y squared. Why is it not a circle? Okay. If this had been a 9, what shape would it be? Circle. If that had been a 4 and that had been a 4, that would also be a circle. If the numbers are the same, it's a circle. Now, with ellipses, we don't really like to have this number over here that's not a 1. So how do we get rid of that number? Okay, so for, first thing we're going to do Make sure we get a 1 over here. That means we're going to not subtract 35, but we're going to divide by 36, making sure we get it into this format because this is going to tell us how far we go on the x and how far we go on the y-axis just by looking under those respective coordinates. So we'll look underneath the x. That'll tell us how far we go in x direction, plus and minus. Look underneath the y. That'll tell us how far we go in y direction, plus and minus. Go ahead and complete that problem for me. So I want you to divide everything by 36. I want you to find out where the center is. Uh, hopefully it's obvious at this, this part where, where the center is for this ellipse. We haven't started shifting these around. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And then graph that on your, your table, my on your graph. So divide them by 36. Hopefully you were able to get down and, and simplify these fractions too. What's this fraction become? 9x squared over 36. How much do we get out of that? X squared over 4. Plus somebody else, uh, what do we get out of the next fraction? Y squared over 9. Good. Equals to? 1. Wow, you guys awake today? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I got three people talking. Usually we're, we're pretty good at this stuff. Did you make it down this far? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, that's clearly an ellipse. Again, what we're looking at here is x squared plus y squared. That tells us we're, we're some sort of circular figure, all right? We're either a circle or an ellipse. If we have different numbers here, what it's saying is it's spreading out, it's squishing out that circle in one direction. If those numbers were the same, it'd say I was squishing that out the same amount in both directions, that would give me a circle. So here we have, well, along the x direction, we're having, well, not four, we're going to find out, we're going to look at in a minute how far out we go from in each direction on the x. But here we're going at nine, that means we're going to be spreading out which way? More along the x or more along the y? What do you think? Along the y. The y. That's, that number's bigger, that means we're in that direction that much more. Also, where is the center of this ellipse? Yeah, the origin, good. So I said 0, 0. Why is it around the origin? Or why is it right at the origin? Not just because it's an ellipse, but if we look at the top of our, our function here, we've got, is there anything being added to x? No. And we've got, is there anything being added or subtracted from y? No. That means it's not shifting it around. Just like on our, our circles before, if we had a plus x or minus x, that meant left or right shift. And if we had a plus or minus y, that, that means we're, we're even going up and down from the origin. So right here, we're not shifting this at all. That means our center right is right at the origin. Center's right at the origin. <clears throat> so center's zero, zero. We'll also talk about the x direction and the y direction. Along the x direction, how, how much are we going left and right? Are we going four? 
Are we going 16 or are we going 2? Those are the three most common answers because people get confused as to, to what you do with that number. Do you take it just like it is? No. Do you square it or do you square root it? Which one? Square it. So we're not going to square it, right? If we square it, we're going to get 16. I'm square it. Two square. We're going to unsquare it. What's the opposite of, what's unsquaring square it mean? A square root. A square root and a square are inverse operations. That's how we identify a square root to begin with. So if you're going to look at this thing right here and you go, okay, I know I'm not going left 4 and right 4. I'm definitely not going left 16 and right 16. We look here and this says that this number is our A after it's been squared. So we need to undo that. We're going to take a square root of that. So if this is, if this is a squared, we want to find just a. We're going to undo that. That's, that's the square root of 4. We're going to get 2. Why? Well, you could write this as 2 squared. True? That, that fits that format. So if that's 2 squared, our a in this case is 2. If we were the square, we've got, we've got the 2. That means we're going left 2 and we're going right 2 from wherever our center happens to be. Now, in the past few examples, our center's been at 0, 0. In, the, in just a moment, we're going to look at where, where our center's not at 0, 0. That's why I've kind of omitted the word x-intercept. I'm just talking about x now, and the y-intercept, I'm just talking about y now. Because in, in the moment, we're not going to have a center there. These, these distances won't exactly be x and y intercepts. They'll just be movement along the x direction, negative and positive, movement along the y direction, negative and positive. So in our case right here, yeah, we're going plus and minus two units from wherever our center is. How about along the y? How much are we going? Up and down, how much? Three. three. Good, because we're, we're looking at that 9. That can be written as 3 squared. Or you think of it, up, about it, the square root of 9 that gives us 3. So from our center, hopefully you went right 2, left 2. Up 3, down 3. <clears throat> And it shows you, if you look at that, we are spreading out more along the y, just like we thought. It's certainly an ellipse because these numbers are different. And this number was bigger underneath the y. It's associated with our y. Say we're going to spread out more along the y. It's going to make a taller ellipse rather than a wider ellipse. There we go. That's our picture. How many people were able to make that picture? Good for you. That's fantastic. Now, are there cases, just like circles, where we don't have to have our ellipses centered around zero? Well, I hope so, because I've been talking about it for the last five minutes, right? I hope that that's the case, otherwise that was a wasted five minutes. Yeah, there, there are. We're going to look at the equation for making ellipses that aren't at the center of our, our graph. So aren't centered at the origin, in other words. Now, it's going to look very similar to this, but what can you expect to happen from this formula to a formula that's not centered at zero, zero. What do you think is going to change? Is the A going to change? What do you think? Is the B going to change? This Is the 1 going to change? What is going to change? The top. The top, yeah. What's going to happen with this? How's it going to look? Instead of just x squared, what might I expect to have up there? The minus. x squared minus 2 plus 2. So that could be x squared minus 2 or plus 2. We're probably going to have a number in there in what? Inside of what? Some parentheses. Oh. We're going to have some parentheses, just like we had with the circles. What letter was normally associated with the X? H. H was. Mm -hmm. And with the Y? K. K. Hey, does that look familiar? I hope, it looks, I hope it looks familiar. If you do this to it, <coughs> that looks just like a circle, doesn't it? Yeah. With a radius of, well, 1. And this, that's called the unit circle. Uh, you'll talk about unit circle in, when you get to math 2 or your, your trigonometry class, uh, whatever you have. But that would be a unit circle, saying the radius is 1. But that thing looks exactly like a circle. Now, if I divide it by numbers that are different, I don't have a circle anymore. I have an ellipse. That's what we talked about this whole time, right? If these numbers are the same, we still get a circle. E even, even like that, it's still a circle. Uh, so our ellipses are just spread out circles, of course, but now that we have this x minus h, y minus k idea, that's the shifting just like we had with circles in the last section. You, you guys see the similarity between those two things? All right. Let's see if we can shift that around. Since this is 
pretty much very similar to a circle since a circle is a type of ellipse, basically. A circle is just a, a special ellipse. A circle is a special ellipse where you have the numbers that are the same. You guys notice that, that that is a circle, right? So a circle is a type of ellipse. An ellipse is not a type of circle. A circle is a special type of ellipse, just where you're spreading out the same direct, same units, the same uh, in different directions. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see if we can go ahead and do this here. How about x minus 1 squared? So since circles are types of ellipses, what we learn for circles really does apply, does apply for ellipses. Firstly, again, you need to be able to determine what shape we have. Is it a parabola? No. Man, this looks nothing like a parabola. Parabolas don't have anything with y squared. Is it a circle or an ellipse? Ellipse. How can you tell the difference again between a circle and an ellipse? What, what's, what's the difference there? It's bigger in one direction. Uh, okay, so. Which direction is this going to be bigger in, the x direction or the y direction? So it's going to look kind of similar to that one, right? Different, different numbers. We're not going to have 2 and 3 anymore. We'll probably have 3 and 4. We can see that already, hopefully. Uh, but it's going to be stretched out longer along the y-axis. Now, let's look at our center. Is our center at 0, 0 still? No. What do you think? Is our center at 0, 0? No. Can you tell me where it's shifting? What does this mean? Let's refresh our memories from, from yesterday. What's that minus one mean? Does that mean up, down, left, or right? Right. right. It means right. Good. It's associated with our x. So that means in an x direction, I'm going to be going either left or right. Here, minus means to the right, and plus means to the left. It was that opposite idea of how, how your mind wants to think, right? If you have that minus one, it's not, it's not left one. It's right one. So this means I'm going to shift it to the right one spot. Also, it means, am I going to go up or down here? What do you think? I'm going to go up three. Yeah. In parentheses, anytime you see graphing in parentheses, it's the opposite of what you want to say. So our center here, that means one. That means three. Our center's at one, three. And if we look at that shifting, it says go to the right one, go up three, put a spot, put a point. Hey, that's exactly what we, we found out according to the formula this was going to be, 1 comma 3. Now the question is, can you use this idea to graph the rest of your ellipse from, from these numbers? Now, of course, the reason why I got away from the words x-intercept and y-intercept is because if you think about this as x-intercept, y-intercept, well, that means you're going from the origin. Are we going from the origin here? No. No, we're going, we're going from that point now. We're going from our center just like we did with our circle. So can you tell me, along the x direction, how far am I going left and right? Tell me that. One right. No, not one right. Oh, along the three. x direction, oh, from, the, from that center, how far am I going? Three. three. Where are you getting the number three? Three yeah. squared is nine. Okay, so right there, that tells us, take the square root of that. We're going plus and minus three from wherever our center is. How about along the y direction, folks? How much? Okay, quick show of hands. How many people feel okay finding the center of this thing? Good. Yes, no over here? Yes? Okay, good. How about this x along the x direction? You okay finding that plus and minus 3? Again, it's very, very similar to, to our ideas with the ellipse not centered at, or centered at 0, 0. And then the plus or minus 4, that's coming from our 16. We take a square root of that. Of course, we're going in both directions there. So from our center, we're going to go... Not from the origin, but from the center. Right three, left three, up four, down four. Just like a circle that's not centered at the origin, it's kind of how we do that. I think my points are a little 